Getting cast in The Heartstopper was delicate and challenging as over 10,000 people auditioned during the COVID pandemic and only a few made it. For a high school teenage show, the casting team focused on auditioning real teenagers who had to be of diverse backgrounds and gender identities. So it was a massive opportunity for young people who had never been on a movie set before. And Joe Locke, who got cast as Charlie, was one of the few lucky ones. Before Joe auditioned for Heartstopper, he had never acted professionally. And because Heartstopper openly called for new actors to audition, it was very convenient for Joe as he didn't need an agent and only had to send a self-tape of himself reading a monologue. Although Joe wasn't very sure initially, he became more confident after a family friend convinced him to go. And Joe said he tried because he believed he had nothing to lose with auditioning. The worst that could happen would be for him not to get the role, but surprisingly, Joe got a recall and another one after that. And that was when he he knew Heartstopper could become a real experience for him, which it later did as he got the part for Charlie. It was a different story for Kit Connor as he got notified of the audition for Heartstopper via his agent, and all he had to do was send in a self-tape. Interestingly, Kit had heard of the Heartstopper graphic novels before he auditioned, but never got around to reading them. According to Kit, a link to the webcomic was sent, and he discovered that the story was even more special than he thought after reading through the four volumes of the books. However, the crazy thing about Kit Connor's audition was that he didn't even audition for Nick Nelson. Kit auditioned for the role of Charlie, and the shift from that to getting to play Nick was a mind-blowing experience. In the audition tape, Kit acted out a monologue about Charlie saying he was sorry and felt terrible after his first kiss with Nick. For Kit, the monologue was a lovely and beautifully written one, and that's why he was so excited to audition for Charlie's role. However, the switch to Nick Nelson after Kit auditioned for Charlie was instant because they asked him to try for Nick Nelson instead when the casting team saw his tape and his looks. Funny enough, Kit knew he didn't perfectly match the description of Charlie, but he couldn't give up the fantastic lines written for the character, so Kit was convinced he might not get the role, but decided to try it. He said, It was just a stroke of luck because I was thinking, especially sending that tape through. The real reason I was doing it is because I knew about the project. I thought it was an amazing project I'd like to be a part of. Getting a call back after reviewing uh, the audition tapes was good news for Joe and Kit, but that was the beginning of more competition. Although they they overcame the previous stages, they could have missed out on getting any of the roles, especially when the chemistry reading between them had to take place. The crazy thing about auditioning for Heartstopper or any romantic show is that it's not enough to know how to deliver the lines perfectly. They must connect and have chemistry with their on-screen partner. So Joe and Kit had their chemistry read by standing six feet away from each other with their masks on as the audition took place when COVID restrictions were still in practice. But the chemistry reading wasn't as straightforward as Kit had to read with two other actors who also auditioned for Charlie. And Joe also did the same thing with two other Nicks before Joe and Kit found each other to be the perfect Charlie and Nick. The chemistry read was a much stricter experience for Joe because he joined them later when the other Charlie's and Nick's actors had already made friends with each other and got more familiar with their roles. However, Joe still won the other Charlie's to emerge as the main one. And Kit thinks Joe did something extraordinary by nailing the part even though he came late to the chemistry read. After Joe and Kit were confirmed to be Heartstopper's main leads, they started to get familiar with their characters by having different Zoom meetings with the teams and crews behind Heartstopper. Although the series found the perfect match for the primary characters, finding the supporting cast was even more challenging even after many auditioned. The show's creative writer, Alice Oseman, was particularly stressed about the whole situation as she wanted the cast to be authentic enough to represent the queer community. So Alice had to consider factors like age as the cast had to be around or close to 16. The cast also had to be talented and of course they had to fit the book descriptions. Also they needed teens who identify with the LGBTQ plus community or are allies. And according to the casting director Daniel Edwards, it was illegal for them to ask about anyone's gender identity or sexuality. Hence they had to have an open call and broad search with how open the casting call was, the Heartstopper team had a hard time finding Elle. Alice mentioned that they wanted a transgender person to play Elle, but it was a challenging search because of Elle's description, as she has to be a young actress of color. The executive producer, Patrick Walters, said they were worried when they couldn't find the perfect description of Elle on time, as they wouldn't have been able to make the show without the character. And for a show like Heartstopper, they didn't want to cast a cis actress, so 
they put a special casting call for Elle, and fortunately, Yasmin Finney came along. Although they've been focused on getting their cast from the UK before, the search had to be extended to the rest of the world, because there are only a few young and trans actresses of color. So, when Yasmin auditioned, the casting director, Daniel, just knew she was the right person, and he described his joy when he saw Yasmin saying, there she was, this incredible trans activist, a 17-year-old in Manchester with more strength of character and soul than I've ever met in anyone. So, in casting Elle, they didn't just need an actress, but someone with some parts of Elle in them. And Yasmin was that girl. Aside from Ella, Heartstopper also had to ensure that they find Tara, who has to be a young actress of color, and Tao, who needs to have an East Asian background. So when Corinna Brown auditioned for Tara, she matched the character beautifully, and the same goes for William Gao, who portrays Tao. The main task in the auditioning process was finding the cast for the characters in the books. When that was over, the search was extended to the characters outside the novels. Even though finding the characters who weren't in the books was easier, Daniel admitted that finding Isaac was a tough job. Different great actors auditioned for Isaac, and whenever Daniel showed Alice their tapes, she would decline and say, I will know Isaac when I see him. They didn't have a detailed guide of what Isaac would be like, but they knew that the actors they'd been meeting still had something lacking, as most of the people who auditioned weren't matching what was expected of the character. Luckily, they met Toby Donovan and the producer Patrick explained how Toby was an instant match. He said, he brings this wry sense of humor and mischievousness, some of his natural characteristics. In the show, when he bursts out into a line like, I want to believe in romance, that's Toby adding his stamp on the character and those little bits clearly mean a lot to people. It was a delightful opportunity for Toby to get cast as Isaac as he was working two jobs and longer hours at the time because he was trying to save up for drama school. But then he got the open audition for Heartstopper and decided to send in his tape of about 30 seconds, which the Heartstopper team liked. So Toby got a recall with the team on Zoom, which led to another Zoom meeting with the casting director and his team members, and then Toby was told he got the part. At this time, it was already two weeks to rehearsals, and it was this late for Toby to join because the search for his character, Isaac, was very long. I think I was the last out of the whole cast to find out I, I was given the part. Um, so I didn't have very much time to prepare. Imogen is another character that wasn't included in the books, but the search for her was shorter than the search for Isaac. The casting director said it was easy to find Imogen because they knew what the character was about. The executive producer, Patrick, explained how they found Imogen saying, Imogen is very brash and bold, but vulnerable underneath it. So when we met Rhea Norwood, she had an amazing take on the character and we knew quite quickly. The exciting thing about the casting of Heartstopper is that they wanted people who don't feel seen to be seen and they achieved that by carefully selecting the cast. Getting the diverse primary cast of Heartstopper was a challenging process, and almost the same can be said of the older and well-known cast. If you were surprised to see Olivia Coleman in Heartstopper, then you should know that Alice Oseman was also very surprised to have her on board. Alice revealed that they secretly wanted someone famous to play Nick's mom, Sarah Nelson, but they thought it might be impossible. However, Alice asked Olivia anyway, and she was shocked to find out the actress was willing to play the role. What do you think about how the cast landed their roles? And would you have preferred a different cast? Share your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching.